today uh, talking about media representation uh, and uh, rationality and irrationality in authoritarian uh, Europe and uh, authority through uh, authoritarianism through representation, as I've now put it, just in a lecture. And the two lectures we had uh, uh, today, um, if you want, this panel is slightly shifting. Uh, the focus, and uh, I'm slightly shifting the focus um, uh, to to see uh, what could Greece be from a completely other, different angle. Because we were talking about media and politics and representation until now, and uh, why I think it is uh, why I choose together with Ike to put uh, the angle about the from to look at Greece from the cultural production is exactly because we don't think that uh, uh, there is a Greece uh, we want to show that uh, answers to the title, this is not Greece, but there is a multiplied way of looking at it. So, um, the question of today's uh, uh, panel, of uh, panel of now is cultural and artistic practice in Greece in conditions of, perma of a permanent state of exception or a permanent state of default. And um, I think that's interesting firstly because we are in a theatre and art festival. We thought um, this fits. But secondly because I would like to show some other protocols of Greece than what we are used to in Germany because in Germany we have only mediated images of Greece, only representations and narrations. And uh, rarely, or not enough, uh, we talk about other parts of society except citizens. <coughs> At the moment, there is only uh, uh, the political. The discussion is focused on, on, on the party, and I think there is so many more uh, uh, images that uh, narrations we could show of Greece. And uh, this is for sure civil society means our, also the cultural field. Um, so. We are building here by showing the culture field, if you want, also a a one of the representations of Greece um, you can think of. And the second question of the panel is if this culture and artistic practices in conditions of state of exceptions, if this have uh, results in aesthetical production, if there is an aesthetical consequence out of this uh, conditions of productions and crisis. And this is important for uh, the conference because we talk here about uh, images. This is what this is the issue of the conference. We talk about images, we talk about narrations, we talk about uh, products that are in the position to represent. So the question is also what kind of aesthetic products does the crisis represent at the moment? So. Uh, we have with us, you can see it also in the program, but you will also introduce uh, yourselves. I think a uh, range uh, uh, two culture producers from Greece um, <coughs> that have uh, also different ways of uh, looking at the situation. It's Anestis Azas, who is a theater maker who has been also doing theater in Germany and is a theater maker who can really uh, say a lot in, about all the range of theater the theatre field in, uh, uh, in Greece. He, is, uh, he has been a part of the Bros Theatre Occupation, which is a, a, a squad, a theatre squad. He is also working with the big Onassis Foundation with private uh, founding and institutional money in Greece. And, uh, and he will talk about uh, the structure of funding also of uh, theatre without what you do, what kind of theatre do you do without state funding. And he is also uh, the co director of the experimental stage of the National Theatre together with Brother Mostinikoris. Um, so he can also talk about the state, <laughs> the, the theatre you can uh, do in a, in, uh, as a state theatre. Uh, then we have uh, Poka Yo, who is an artist and the co-director of the Athens Biennial, together with Xenia Kampalzoglu. I think the Athens Biennial is for me one of the most interesting um, 
art institutions in Greece because it's a day institution than an institution, I would say, and works in another way than we are used to uh, how uh, normally exhibitions work. And we have Anna Multa. Anna Multa is Multa in Greek accent. Um, Anna Multa is um, uh, a dance and theatre curator. She is the dance curator of the Sophienseele in Hamburg, uh, also the director in Berlin. in Berlin, also the director of the Tanztage, the Festival Tanztage in Berlin. And uh, she uh, just did a uh, project which is called X Apartments in Athens as a German curator working with the institution in Greece, she will tell us about it. For me, it's interesting to have Anna as also a perspective that is um, looking at Greece also from a German perspective and does experiences now there, or had experiences there. Good, and we will start with uh, 10 minutes inputs. Mm -hmm. Yes, with you. Hello. Oh, is that work? Yes. Yes. Hello, uh, my name is Ernest Sazas, and I, as Marga said, I'm a theatre director. Uh, I started here in Berlin, in Germany, but since 2008 uh, I work uh, mostly in Athens, but between Athens and Berlin. <coughs> um, maybe the, the first thing, uh, Marga asked, asked me to, to make an introduction about, uh, a little bit to describe the, the landscape. And maybe the, the, the first thing to say is that uh, even, even before the crisis, the, the, the landscape of cultural production, or at least theatre production in Greece, uh, is not as we imagine it uh, uh, by our experience from the central European uh, structures. We don't have such a thing like uh, state theatres. There are only two state theatres in the whole country and a summer festival, which is also uh, public. Uh, the, the main uh, feature of the scene uh, was also before the crisis that it was uh, organized like a small private uh, economy. Uh, we have something like 80 stages in, in Athens, which is a theater city, this is important to say. I mean, it, it, Athens has the tradition of, of, a, of a theater Hauptstadt. Uh, people go to the theater and people make theater. Uh, this winter we had over more than 1,000 uh, premieres, for example, new plays. Um, but um, the, um, one moment when, when, when the whole thing uh, changed, or seemed that, that now, and, and it is important also to say that even before the crisis, uh, the, the way how people produce theater in Greece uh, was uh, very poor, I mean, with, with a very, very little uh, amount of, of, of funding in comparison to Central Europe. Uh, 2011 uh, happened uh, that they, they totally uh, and, and, and uh, definitely uh, stopped financing the, the, the free scene. Uh, so you have you have a, a, a small uh, scene, a free scene, which is organized like a private eco economy and, and uh, lived a lot with the subsidies uh, from the Ministry of Culture. And the first thing that they did when the, when this began is that they totally cut any kind of, of subsidies. So uh, and at the same time they also reduced a lot the, the budget of the, of the, of the state theaters and um, the. The example was uh, that the people uh, continued producing, but with, with, with even less money. And usually, the, the reality the reality is that you have the groups they, they come to a, to, a, to a deal with uh, the stage, one of these private stages. Usually, the deal is 50-50. Uh, they get in the, the, the play the. The play, and they 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 try to, to um, survive by the income of the of the tickets, uh, which obviously has also an aesthetic consequence. It means that it is not possible in Greece to make to stage uh, products with, with with big ensembles. It's usually 90% or 95% of what you see is uh, either monologues or uh, plays with two or three persons because it's, it's not sustainable to, to 
make anything else than that in these conditions. Now, in this moment, in this landscape, appears a very uh, new thing for, for, for our uh, scene, which is the, the, the contribution of, the, of two big private foundations, uh, the Onassis Foundations and the Foundation and the Nyarkos Foundation. Both uh, Onassis and Nyarkos are uh, ship owner families. Well, the families directly have nothing to do with the foundations because this, these are people that already 50 years ago uh, dead. Uh, there's foundations uh, which are based in New York, I think, uh, or in London. As so, a foundation is in New York, New York is in London. And uh, they build up two very impressive theaters. I mean, Onassis Theatre uh, began in 2010, and uh, Niarchos Theatre is now built up and will begin next uh, year. It's built up on the, on the, at the seafront, very close to the Falio. It's a, it's a real uh, impressive thing. And uh, they totally changed the, 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 the landscape uh, in terms of oh, they are the, the only producers as we can understand it. Uh, I mean, they are the only foundations, the only institutions that can produce uh, professionally. Uh, the only two places where you can work under professional conditions in Greece right now. Um, This is the situation. At the same time, we had uh, these movements of, of, of uh, where also I took part of, of trying to reoccupate public spaces. The occupation, for example, of Ambrose, or uh, some months ago, the occupation of uh, Green Park in in, uh, in in a central park in Athens, which are mostly kind of, of reactions of, of, of uh, some artists uh, to do something against against this. This procedure, but uh, the point is that the last five years, you have to to to, uh, to accept that if you want to make theater in Greece, you you do it without money, which means that either you have money by your family, or uh, you uh, try to uh, network yourself uh, abroad and try to uh, apply for for. Further in, in, in Germany, France, uh, wherever. Um, what this is important to say now from the beginning, from the introduction? National Theatre? National Theatre uh, was a catastrophe last year because uh, they had installed, the last government, which was a very right wing government, had installed some, some own uh, persons over there and uh, they produced. Uh, kind of very popular thing and now the new government installed a new uh, artistic director and he asked us, me and Prodromos, to uh, uh, maintain one of the, of the stages uh, which we are going to do, uh, though uh, there are a lot of problems, mostly financing. I mean, we discussed since three years, three, three months uh, about, about the program and the, the content and then we tried to, to conceive a concept but we still haven't said one word about the budget because uh, the Ministry of Culture cannot say how much money we, we would have to... And, uh, so it's, it's what, you, what you also described before, it's like, I mean, we go step by step and we try to react on the realities of the next day, um, not being able to, to conceive or to plan things long term. But at the same point, it's, it's, uh, Athens is a very creative, uh, place right now because you have the issues, you have the topics, you have the conflicts, uh, you have actually what you need uh, in order to, to, to produce uh, an narration or a dramaturgy. You, you are confronted uh, permanently to a mainstream narration which is uh, quite uh, manipulated by the uh, mainstream media. So it's, it's a very interesting place for me to be there right now and to try to make theatre. Maybe we can make it more special later in the discussion. Yes, just to that, um, yesterday we were talking and uh, we um, came up with the phrase um, that for the arts and culture scenes, Greece is the land of opportunity. <laughs> uh, being the fact, and uh, I think for you, Pocayo will uh, 
mention this too, that the interest uh, from the sides of the cultural producers all around the world uh, is immense uh, for Athens at the moment. If you want, it is like the, the exact counter uh, um, uh, direction of movement. <coughs> I mean, we know the documenta has uh, the title Learning from Athens, which is the exact the counter movement of what we were mentioning yesterday as uh, the direction of the teacher towards the undisciplined school child of Greece that Germany has to, to uh, taught Greece how to do things. And for the arts, it's actually the other way around, which is, I think, an interesting point to take uh, with us. Um, and Anna, I think, maybe you can follow also this line of thought with uh, because uh, you, you were mentioning the complete autonomous, squatted uh, uh, spaces of cultural work, then the, if you want, private oligarchs money that I provocatively put like this, that are the only source of, of uh, uh, finance of, of arts. And then we have the state that doesn't even know if it will exist the next day, but still plans in order to exist. And uh, you had uh, an experience with working with the institution there. Yeah, um, I came to agree to Athens for a project, but in this case, um, I, we were asked uh, to do a project there by the Onassis Cultural Center, and it's really a fact that many, many cultural producers, many artists come to Athens at the moment. The rents are very cheap, so you can rather easily start uh, project spaces or have a studio there if you have some foreign money. Um, so if you don't have a little bit of uh, good institute money, Quelvizia money, it's quite easy to set up a project there. Um, but um, I, mean, I think we're going to talk about this later. <laughs> and, uh, but in this case, um, Katja Alfara, the uh, curator for dance and theater of the Onassis Cultural Center, approached Matthias Lilienthal and asked um, if he could do the project at the apartments in Athens. And this, his immediate reaction was, uh, what a crazy idea, you should, it's a very expensive project, just take this money and give it to young um, groups of the local scene. Um, and then uh, Katja explained uh, very detailed for what reasons she thinks this, exactly this project is uh, important for, for Athens, which has to do with um, the need for, for also performance projects in the public and private space, and by going into the public and private space, of course, you can tell a lot of uh, the, the stories of um, people that are of normal people, of people that are not uh, normally heard in the, in the media. And um, so, and also her working in an institution like the Onassis Cultural Center, uh, she needed this kind of big flag, flagship project by this famous uh, curator uh, Matthias Lienthal and with like, the possibility of pulling in um, famous international artists to do, to do works. Uh, she needed that um, reputation of the project to actually get it to the, the board uh, because um, not like uh, curators in institution, institutions like Kampnagel and so on uh, who are of course uh, independent in the artistic um, decisions in the Onassis Cultural Center, um, uh, Katja can only make a uh, propose um, a, a schedule for a program for a whole for the whole season, and then a board with sometimes quite erratic uh, decisions um, uh, decide uh, and kicks kick some stuff out, and others uh, is realized. Um, I went there to the <coughs> apartments, but uh, it's not me as the only curator. We did it in a uh, collaboration in a team uh, of three people. So Katja was a part of it, and also Prodromo Sinikouris, who you worked with, uh, worked with a lot in a, uh, in a duo. Um, uh, he was a dramaturg. And um, so, um, my, of course, I was there with the, kind of the perspective from the outside. But there was, of course, a much stronger perspective uh, from the inside with the uh, knowledge of the local context, which is 
uh, as I think very important. So I would not want to go in, into another country, especially not uh, like Greece in the mo situation at the moment, and do just a project how I uh, myself think it's, it's, it's good. Um, we, it's really important uh, that uh, local expertise. Um, X Apartments is a site-specific project that goes <coughs> into the public space and the private space. So um, audience members, only two people at a the time, they go on a tour and see in private apartments um, short performances. So they visit <coughs> eight apartments on one tour um, and the performances are conceived by <coughs> Uh, partly local uh, artists and partly uh, artists from abroad. So also there you have the, the, the perspective from the outside and the perspective um, <laughs> from, the, from the inside, which I think is uh, important uh, to integrate both in a, in a project. Because, um, we, are, we always choose uh, two specific neighborhoods and then um, the local people, of course, uh, <coughs> uh, sometimes have uh, in-depth knowledge of these neighborhoods, sometimes also not, uh, because these neighborhoods are not always, are not the, the, mostly the, the popular neighborhoods that people spend a lot of time that they probably live in, but it's more um, the deprived, the poorer uh, neighborhoods with uh, more like social conflict. And, um, and so also the artists from abroad come with a kind of a, Fresh uh, perspective on these on these neighborhoods. Um, the considering the conditions of production, it's quite uh, um, a, it's a total contradiction of what like 99% of the theater scene in Greece experience, who produce with really no money at all. Um, our production was financed uh, almost completely by the Nassus Cultural Center. There was a little bit of Goethe and Proevitia money, but not more than <coughs> maybe five percent. And um, I would not say that the that the production was in any way different than it would have been in Berlin. I did the project many times also in Berlin, and it was so. I cannot. There's of course, maybe if you have the money, then you can uh, you can produce um, kind of freely with this, with this kind of expensive. <laughs> Uh, project. Um, concerning the aesthetics, um, it's probably uh, different. I would argue that there is a, uh, that there is of course an effect of the crisis, uh, but maybe we we'll come to this um, later. The Onassis Cultural Center. Um, it, it's it's very obviously made for representation, which you can see in their in their program but also um, in the architecture. It looks a bit like you're coming to a uh, theater in maybe Dubai. Um, <laughs> it's huge, it has, it's a glass building, but it has a marble facade to keep the sun out a little bit. And then inside, uh, it's a huge golden egg, and this egg holds the big, uh, the big theater with over a thousand seats. Um, a classical proscenium stage with balcony and everything. Like it was built in 2010. I, I would have thought nobody would build such a theater today because everybody actually would need a more flexible space. This space is not flexible at all. And they have two smaller spaces that are actually not very suitable for theater at all. Um, but actually, Katja does quite. Um, uh, a progressive, experimental, very political program there. Of course, she also has to program the occasional Akram Khan to get the masters, but uh, she really succeeds in sneaking in experimental political stuff like this, like the, the projects in the public space. Thank you. Yes, you can. Um the experiment, the example of Onassis Foundation is interesting and important because we all depend on the Onassis Foundation. Like we said yesterday, actually all of us, if you do uh, things in Greece, you will pass by our cooperation. And if you do professional cultural work in Greece, you will pass by our cooperation with the Onassis Foundation. So it's, it's nothing... Um, we just uh, talk about, uh, but, but it has it has um, mm, a place in the field uh, that is quite important. 
as if it was a, a, a state uh, institution. And this also brings a lot of contradictions. And I think we will talk about this. For example, Katya trying to really do a progressive program there, trying to um, uh, work with communities, uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, work with different aesthetic formats than only representational formats. And on the other side, knowing that uh, you uh, were that you were also accused of. Uh, there is a lot of critique about artistic colonialism, people coming from Central Europe to Greece uh, to do projects in a, uh, that has the danger of having a colonialist attitude, um, taking the crisis porn. If we talk about representation, there's also a term This in, in, in the cultural field. We have crisis porn. The, the, more crisis we can show, the better, the more spectacular uh, we could maybe uh, accumulate symbolic capital with in the cultural field. Uh, poverty, voyeurism is another term we are talking so, uh, and it, it, these contradictions are inside our work all the time, especially if you're working with an oligarch who actually, in an oligarchic foundation, who actually wants to help, but um, in the same time, yes, can't avoid. <coughs> maybe gentrify, colonialize, or be voyeurist. I think this is one of our questions. And yes, um, I would ask Polidoros to say something about conditions of productions of Athens by any of the right. projects and narratives. I'm going to say the story of the Athens Biennale and try to weave a little bit with uh, the Athenian condition, with the Greek condition. So, um, any, every good story starts, of course, as uh, Campbell said, with, us, with the ordinary life. Everything is good, fantastic. So we're back in the 2005, after the Olympic Games. Uh, the cultural scene is booming. I'm, I'm a visual artist myself. The contemporary art scene of the visual arts is booming too. Uh, but still, there is a problem. There is no, no, no sign of any development, any sign of, uh, of future. So we are, uh, this is a national tourism uh, a campaign of the, of the time, based on the kids, uh, seas and sex, the, the, the triptych of what consists in uh, Greece. And we are sitting in a more similar uh, surrounding with my then, uh, with my colleague uh, in the Athens Biennale, Xenia, and she, was, she came uh, recently from uh, England and she was whining that there is no future. She says no future and the booming of the contemporary art scene was doomed to fail. And I told her, stop whining, let's do something. Let's do something ourselves. There was no uh, contemporary art museum back then, no art center, contem contemporary art center in Athens. A few galleries and still very limited resources for all of us. So I said, stop, stop whining. Uh, let's do something ourselves. Let's initiate uh, an Athens Biennale. And that's what we did. Uh, and uh, the first thing that we, we sensed that is, is that we had to go against the stereotypes. The stereotypes, these kids' stereotypes about uh, Greece. Why is that? Because Athens, the biennial, of course, is established in a city, it's not a, a Greek biennial, it's an Athenian biennial, um, has, to stay, has to say a story about the, Athens, uh, about the city itself. Uh, and it has to be relevant. It's like an X-ray of the city. In, in order to be relevant, it has to, be, to go down to the bone. Uh, and uh, what was the situation? A lot of unrest and a lot of problems. There were, uh, the, the barometric as we said, it was very high. It was such, so much unrest, of course, not publicly uh, uh, acknowledged, and uh, we, 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 we went straight to, to address that by destroyers, which was to break these stereotypes and bring this unrest in Athens uh, forward. At that, at that point, th that was a premonition, an omen of a, of a very, very dark future about to, to unleash. Uh, uh, Destroy Athens was a massive exhibition. We, we all the way, uh, private institutions, I mean, we, we had no uh, uh, funds ourselves, no means on ourselves. We, we managed to amass uh, the amount necessary to establish a, a biennial, and we did the, the, the Destroy Athens exhibition as a, as a huge exhibition. We tried to decode what is an exhibition, what is a biennial. In fact, it's an exhibition, and an exhibition, I mean, we come from the performative arts, more, more of, uh, or less, uh, most of you. So, an exhibition large in, in uh, space means an exhibition large in time. And uh, large in time means a time-based work. In fact, we understood that, uh, the, that, that, how, that how we uh, designed the first uh, Biennale as an exhibition. It was very uh, 
uh, contested within the contemporary world and they said as a, as a boxed thing. But we understood that this, there was something more than that. And in fact, it was uh, an event, it was uh, uh, an experience. Because something that you experience in time makes a dramaturgy. So you have to say a story, not to exhibit things. People are not so much interested to be shown things, yet to live something. And that's how we were led to the second Biennale in 2009. A problem 2008, the, uh, the, the crisis was uh, struck uh, uh, Greece. And it was very harsh, yet all the planning for heaven was already uh, in line. Uh, heaven was the opposite of destroy Athens. Uh, the first was ominous and dark. The second tried to find the, the shortcomings of the modernism of the 20th century, uh, metaphysics, um, uh, modernity, uh, the occult, all the, these things that could possibly, of course, uh, uh, political movements, all, the, all these things that we have uh, maybe left behind. And, but this, if we were a little bit avant-garde uh, with the a little bit ahead of our times, uh, and assuming a future about to come, in, uh, after the crisis, we, we started to decline uh, back uh, further. So, in fact, history started accelerating to the point that we were obsolete by 2009, already. Uh, and the way that we designed, we had designed the heaven was like this, two parallel uh, things. One, because we invested heavily on the live event, on, on the experience thing, which of course capitalism uh, has already invested heavily to this experience uh, product. But when that even uh, heaven failed a little bit because all of these, thing, these things, the exhibition and the live uh, part was, uh, went in parallel and not together. So then we moved to monotrope. Uh, that was the, the eye of the hurricane, of the crisis, in 2011, and it was done without means at all. The first, first and second was done closely to 1.5 one, one, uh, 1. million uh, euros. Uh, the third was done with no money at all. And, uh, but we said, what, what can we do when we don't have money? Money to produce things, to see things, uh, to ensure things, etc. So let's put uh, the problems in the, in the human factor. So it was a massive uh, uh, event that called for the engagement of the public. Of course, the engagement is another thing that we hear more and more about uh, from the capitalism. Uh, but uh, for monodrome, it was only one way to go. It was the only way to go to engage in something. So the, this public school, all these performances were in the core of the exhibition. It was not just uh, something running in parallel. And then that moved us to uh, Agora, 2013. But 2013, there was the Indignados movement and everyone was in the streets. So how could we be uh, relative with something that happened in the streets? And how, how can we break the, the, uh, um, the ivory tower of contemporary art and go out and do something relevant? We had to come up with something that resonated with what happened outside, with the movements. So we broke, this is the former stock exchange, it was closed, we opened it uh, for the first time uh, for the public. So it was a massive assembly in Agora, Agora was the name of the, of the third uh, uh, Biennale, of the fourth Biennale. And in fact, what you see before in Monodrome, what happened is that we opened up the four uh, sides of the box and uh, we let participation engagement was uh, turned into uh, participation and active participation. People don't want to be shown things, to be told what is important in this uh, value system of contemporary art, but want to be also producers. And they are producers. I mean, we're, with our mobile device, everyone feels already uh, that has the, the, uh, the power and the, the knowledge to be part of something. So participation was the most important thing uh, then. And uh, now it moves to the next step. Of course, Agora was uh, uh, acclaimed, uh, awarded, etc., etc. But what, uh, it was curated by a uh, collective curatorial of 40 people. It, not even one single curator cannot uh, uh, get the grasp of what's happening. It's impossible to have a, uh, an important curator that comes for a couple of weeks and understand what's happening. And this is basically what the Biennial Circuit is doing internationally. It has a, a, a big name that comes and shows uh, people what is important according to his agenda. 
But for us, it was different. We had to come from bottom up. So we made this huge open call, this assembly of uh, curators, social scientists, um, theorists, artists, etc., etc. But, but how can we move forward from that? Because still, uh, Agora was an event, and an event is not even enough. Because this is highly commodified as well. Something that lasts only for a one month or two months is not, not important. People are seeking something sustainable, something that can have a future. So uh, we designed this uh, coming biennial from uh, 2015 to 2017, coinciding with uh, Documenta. In, uh, Margareta mentioned Documenta. Uh, the current artist director of Documenta came to the Agora opening. He was uh, amazed from what he saw there. And he said, and uh, he went back to his uh, room and he finished his proposal. And he, he proposed, and he was uh, granted uh, the task to take a the task of Documenta. In fact, that's very interesting, because when we started back in 2007, we had a, a secret agenda ourselves to put the contemporary uh, world of Athens in the, in the international map, because this was an uncharted area, not exotic enough, not a metropolis, nothing. Uh, like uh, Wyoming or Wisconsin, nobody cares for that uh, type of places when you're in the States. So we felt that Greece was something like that. but. Uh, uh, last year I was um, in the inauguration of the Documenta in Kassel, in the CEO's office, and I remember the first uh, press clippings that came from the press. And there was a, a major German uh, newspaper with a map of Greece, uh, of Europe, and the pin in Kassel and Athens. So may, may, basically, in this uh, decade, we, ma we managed to put uh, this pin on the map. And it was interesting, but what to do after that? So we said that we will stretch the biennial, not for a two-month or three-month event, but into a two-year laboratory. Athens is a laboratory. I have to tell you, the same way that I'm here now, many people, I mean, weekly, we have many people coming, visiting Athens, asking for interviews, asking to, to get a studio, artist, curator, theorist. I mean, probably everyone here is bombarded by requests of all sorts. People see that there's a living laboratory. Athens and they are flocking there because they see the opportunity also for and the threats. So what we came up with uh, Omonia, this is the title, and Massimiliano Molona is uh, running as a director of, uh, of the 5th to 6th Biennale, is from uh, participation to production, something that will leave something behind. We do not know what that will be. So we just make, make the factory of ideas and probably post uh, uh, products. A little, that was a little bit about the Biennale, about the artist now. This is my toothpaste um, from a hotel a few weeks ago. I was uh, doing a shooting out of Athens. And uh, all of a sudden I had, I had this uh, light bulb uh, above my head. I said, this is what we have been uh, doing, we have been suffering. To, to finish a, a tube of toothpaste, it takes something like two weeks or three, three weeks. But then, when it's in, at that stage, it can last for another week also. I managed to have the same, the same, uh, the same <laughs> tube for another half, uh, one week. I said, how are we doing that? We're burning the fat. And in fact, I have a lot of uh, love hands myself. So there's a lot of fat still to, to burn. And this is what we're doing. I mean, we're like cockroaches. The, the artists and uh, cultural producers in Greece have learned to survive into something very difficult. We had nothing before the crisis, and we still have nothing. So we are kind of equipped to survive this, this condition. And this is, brings us to something like a privileged uh, condition. And this is the, the, uh, the referendum day. Again, I was uh, out of Athens uh, in an island shooting my, my new film. And uh, there, there was this uh, public feast. We have these feasts in, uh, in islands and in uh, rural Greece. They come up uh, with religion, but there has, has nothing to do with religion. And people were uh, dancing and singing the same time, the same hours that was um, the uh, the future of uh, of Greece was lingering, and people were there holding hands and and, and dancing. And this was 6 a.m. in the morning, all night. So there is something there that I, makes me feel a bit a bit uh, optimistic, you know. This is uh, my studio and my new works. There are so many stereotypes. There are so many stereotypes about Greece, what we are and what we are doing. In fact, I believe there is a, a huge... I would like to ask someone that maybe know about that. There are so many linguistic uh, problems. We call it stereotypes, but it's something much different. We have so many different values. For you, guilt equals 
uh, uh, debt equals guilt. For us, in our language, and we don't understand this, when start at debt equals pride, chreos. Also, uh, duty, duty and pride. For us, debt equals duty and pride. I remember a very good friend of mine who, who, used, who used to be a um, civil engineer. At some point, he, when he went out to the market after he graduated, he was amazed because he said, my God, the most important civil engineers have a, 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 a extreme amounts of debt. And there is this saying that the more debt that you have, the more, um, uh, the more proud you have. Why is that? Because everyone respects you because they trust in you. They trust, since you have a debt, you will pay out, you will pay out debt. This is unheard for generous. But it was a condition for Greece. So I would say that there are so many different inherited uh, problems that we have and we cannot ad address that. And Bill Chaitung and not, unfortunately not just Bill Chaitung are pushing this to the limits to create the propaganda. I'm sorry, we're not Protestants. We do not understand collective guilt. This is something that we do not have and we do not understand. In each uh, uh, talk I give, people come to me and say, I mean, I'm talking about very radical uh, left people or <coughs> very conservative entrepreneurs, and they come and say, don't you feel guilt about the, the situation that you brought to your country? And I say, no, we don't have such, such a thing as collective guilt. Whereas you are conditioned in that. We are Dionysian in a way. I mean, we're having the, the good time in the, in the dance as I showed you before. This is something that, you're, that you cannot simply understand. And this is something unbridgeable. We projected ourselves in the common vision of Europe, and you did the same. But for our own very uh, particular uh, reasons, which are different, totally different. They say that people are either divided in the carrot or the whip or the, the stick. We are the carrot people. And maybe, I, I do not like to generalize or stereotype, but there is a tendency here. The people are of the north are more the, of the stick uh, or the whip type of people. You, you were towards, you are away from. And this, uh, this thing brings so much misunderstandings in a, day, in a daily life. So I would say, just come over, use our uh, way, and maybe we will find out something together. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pograyo. Mm, there is now, I think, all the subjects laid out. And I would uh, like to um, continue from that and ask Anestis um, what I think was impressive now to hear is um, the argument we are cockroaches. Uh, so, uh, out of a complete hopeless situation, as Athena had put it, or the situation of uh, having no possibilities to actually, in this uh, very negative uh, time and, and, and space situation, to actually think of oneself as the privileged one. This is what you said, Bukayo. We are in a say, we are cockroaches, we, um, we know how to survive, we're actually in a privileged condition. Um, what would you say uh, about this, uh, unless this being someone who works in... I am a rat. <laughs> <laughs> These are the self-representation images of Greek artists. What is it that? No, but we, this is the, if we said like um, Greece is the land of opportunity for uh, the cultural field at the moment, for some reason there is all this uh, myth bound onto this. And uh, if Pocayo says actually because there is for us not uh, the normal conditions of production, we actually profit in this or that way by being more, being like cockroaches, being able to survive whatever happens, being able to produce whatever happens. Maybe also, and this is what I would say about what Pocayo is doing, maybe also to invent new times, new ways of doing culture by, for example, doing a two years program for a biennial, which is another way of curating that to do a big festival, to say we want to, to create something sustainable in the city because this is actually how, what society does. It's not that the art does it. 
So I, my question would be, would you, would you see something similar? Why, how would you react to this argument? We are in a privileged position. Uh, we definitely are not in a privileged position, but we have, been, uh, have nothing else to do. I mean, uh, uh, I think that, uh, I guess it, it might be like that everywhere, not only in Greece, because what we, uh, we do, we do it out of a necessity. We don't do it uh, out of, 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 of uh, of, of, a, of a desire to to uh, to be rich or something maybe to be famous but definitely not to be rich so uh, we uh, we have to continue uh, with uh, any means that we have to uh... yes oh. and uh, I remember uh, your last uh, play. Uh, what that you did in Athens Festival. Uh, I had also other friends uh, working for the Athens Festival, the summer festival is the biggest uh, festival in Greece. Uh, theater festival is one of the few that has money. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the money for the theater festival comes from the tickets of the train. Uh, and uh, in the week of the referendum, the Syriza government uh, actually said that public transport is free since there was no money in the banks, as you know, and uh, the Syriza government wanted to make it more easy for people to uh, uh, go from A to B, so public transport was free, which actually resulted into the Athens Festival not having money to pay the theatre productions. You know, this is, it is uh, so simple in Greece at the moment with money. So many of my friends didn't know if they were getting we would get paid for the premieres, etc. And um, uh, what I, I was impressed by your theatre piece that I saw only one uh, rehearsal. Uh, you were rehearsing in these two weeks, in the referendum week and in the 13th of July week. And uh, actually, before starting your piece, the whole first scene is a collective discussion among the actors about how can we actually be in the rehearsal space and do theatre, while out there um, time changes every hour, you know, the future changes every hour and every hour something else could happen that will change the way of things are going. And how can we plan a theatre piece uh, like this? Um, uh, maybe why did you do it? And is this, is this not an aesthetic aesthetic result? Aesthetic result of uh, the crisis. Uh, the point of this scene was, I mean, we uh, that was a real strike, strike. Strike. How do you say strike? Struggle. Disagreement. The, disagreement. Uh, or disagreement. Disagreement with the, during the rehearsals of uh, if we should continue because there was a moment where some of the of the, product, of the of the productions stopped rehearsing. Other people said uh, made decisions like, okay, we will play, but we will play without costumes, without settings. We will just go and say the text. Uh, and uh, so every day there were people going in the, in the, in the, in the cash, in uh, the box office, uh, with, the, with, the, with the tickets that, that they had already uh, uh, bought, uh, and said, okay, there is no uh, cash, can I change my ticket and get some cash? And, uh, <laughs> and in this situation we had, we had uh, to, make, to, to bring the play to, to, to the premiere, because this is what we have to do in any kind of situation. So there was this struggle in the team, what are we going to do, how are we going to, uh, to proceed and uh, why, especially now, uh, with all these uh, problems, uh, are we making a, a play about uh, refugees, because the play is about uh, 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 shipwreck. Uh, shipwreck. Yeah, with, shipwreck. Yes. with uh, refugees that happened uh, two years ago, something like the small Lampedusa of Greece. And a lot of refugees were drunk. And it was just, uh, a horrible story. Um, yes, so we tried to, we, we, we decided to, to thematize it and, and, and uh, put it uh, even in the prologue of the, of the play because the point is about the cockroaches story that we uh, we do struggle uh, uh, with with the same uh, uh, machine uh, of bureaucracy and of a totally corrupt state, and we have to say that also. Because I have the feeling that in all these conferences we have a projection of Greece, which is which is quite uh, impressive for me. I like it. You speak about Greece on an ideological way, and this is this is very 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 uh, fascinating. But uh, if you have the experience of Greece, 
then uh, you also have uh, to understand that it is, it is, it is a, a permanent struggle <coughs> against a machine that doesn't work and, and it's a permanent struggle also for your basic rights. You have, for example, justice doesn't work. I don't speak about the economy because economy, uh, okay, it's very important, but we cannot solve it uh, as a civil society. But, but we could maybe maintain or try to, to solve or to move a little bit is other uh, values uh, on, 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 on uh, what, we, what, what we call this uh, burga, uh, yeah, civil rights and, 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 and democracy. So we, 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 we have also to defend because there is a lot of criticism against democracy, but we have to, to say about, about this new liberal, liberal blah, 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 democracy, how it is practiced in Europe right now. Yes, of course. But there's one thing, that we still have freedom of speech. And this is very, very important. Because if, if we compare it with our uh, neighbor countries, because geographically we are between the Balkans and the Middle East, we shouldn't forget this. We still have some rights in this, which we have to fight for. And this is, I think, the most important thing when you produce, uh, when you make theater. And this is also the thing, your, your, your um, ansatz. Um, Approach. Yeah, the, the point where you begin from is that you have to, to uh, a very certain enemy, a very certain machine to fight against. So, that's my um, We can come into how do you build democracy and, or organization as a culture scene that you're doing also in our friends. Um, to you, Anna. Um, I, I do the very mean thing to ask you the meanest question, <laughs> and to because oh, there is a question also, and, and actually I, I know this um, reproach, uh, especially uh, towards Adam Zimczyk, uh, the director, the artistic director of the documenta. There is a lot of narration, for example, this moment in Greece about this artistic colonialism. Uh, term uh, I mentioned before, and you as being a German. Uh, who went to Greece <laughs> in order to uh, curate a program that Matthias Lilienthal, another very important German, um, invented together with a private institution in order actually to open uh, access to people to private homes of impoverished neighborhoods. So if you want, you, one can reproach you everything, like uh, artistic colonialism, poverty, voyeurism, crisis porn, and uh, mm, yes, how and if how would you come out of this deficit position? Of this, yes. I mean, I, we got the accusation um, of the, the colonialism, poverty voyeurism, not uh, actually at all because it's it's uh, it was not a German uh, project, but it's in in its from its origin, a German uh, concept, um, but it was not perceived um, uh, in Athens as a German project. It was perceived as a project of the Onassis Cultural Center, but this, of course, then had another another tale of, of consequences, um, because they are the rich uh, players in the cultural scene, and um, in general we got a really, really good review from the press, but they were also uh, review saying, oh, um, you're letting people look into the keyhole, to, uh, to the poverty um, of the people, you saw the misfortune, um, and uh, this is not, uh, Onassis oh, Cultural Center should not be allowed to do that for, for homeless people. Um, I mean, to turn this, this accusation around uh, means, uh, okay, there is the cultural player with a lot of money, but what you want from them is just to do um, harmless, rep uncritical representation. Um, that would be the the the, uh, the other uh, possibility. Um, we, there was, you said there was a bit of uh, criticism of gentrification um, in the in the scene. Uh, um, I would say the Ixa province is quite an un unspectacular project. 
uh, especially uh, considering the love of spect spectacle that of Matthias Liegenthal. Um, but it's uh, it's really more uh, um, an intervention in the micro on the microscopic level in in the neighborhood because the audience are only two people at a time. So. Um, in total, to one neighborhood, it's just 200 people who go there or in the course of four days. And so it's very on a, very, on a level that you, if you are in that neighborhood, um, you, you don't see that project at all. You just see two people walking on the street, which you see every day, all the time. Um, so I would argue that the gentrification effect of that project is uh, rather neglectable. What the project definitely has is the voyeuristic aspect that you mentioned. And this is something that we always, and I always talk about with the um, inhabitants and with the artists, of course, very openly. Many artists uh, also in their works um, deal with this openly with that, of course, with the, that issue. Uh, because uh, opening a private uh, place and letting in an uh, audience is, uh, is uh, uh, of course, pro problematic. Um, and, but we also deal with this uh, openly in the, in the press conference, in the curatorial statement, um, that it's, it is a voyeuristic uh, uh, project, but we try, uh, but by, by having only two people in, in, in the audience, um, we try to break this voyeurism also and turn it around, because the people in the apartments, they also look, they also look back. Uh, and the, the position of the people who win the ballot enter, uh, they don't know what the, the deal is in, inside. Uh, the rules uh, are made by the people in the apartment, and so they are more also in a vulnerable position. Um, what, what I think is interesting is uh, who do you address your warriors to? And um, the, the, it was you, you did a research about the private apartments that we could find of rich people. So if there is a rich neighborhoods that we could go there and also go to the apartments. And you said it was not interesting. And I think it's, uh, for me, this was an interesting point. Why is it not interesting? Is it a projection um, that poverty or pain is more interesting? I guess poverty is more interesting and the fact that it is really dissident to, uh, to the rule. Um, Mm, and there, I think it's interesting to connect it to your film, Sospiti, who, which is actually a film looking at a very rich uh, Greek family. And uh, not, so this was for me the interesting point about the film, that it's not relating actually a very stereotype uh, uh, narration of the humanitarian crisis in Greece, uh, being very sad about this, etc. Um, but I would like to... Can okay, I quickly yeah. answer? <laughs> Uh, so there, there was, um, yes, there were many times, sometimes we did uh, uh, rich areas also, I think in Sao Paulo, but mostly um, not, and uh, we sometimes research them and then they tend to be very uh, homogenic, and then uh, I find them, I don't find richness in itself not interesting, <laughs> but, I, 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 but I, then you, you show eight different stories that are not so different, that are quite homogenic. And in the, in the neighborhoods that we uh, look for, there are many contradictions. You have people from very different backgrounds, origins, and then you find, uh, you, can, you can really open a whole panorama of that, of that neighborhood. That's what we're looking for. We have, the, for example, in Kipseli, two quite rich uh, uh, also apartments that were not chosen by the artists, because the artists can, they get a selection and they, they can really choose what they are interested in. And those small bourgeois apartments were not uh, chosen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting uh, point. Richness is not so interesting after all. <laughs> Maybe. Boca uh, Yo, um, last question and then we open to the audience. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm really actually uh, impressed by. The, the, the development uh, your curatorial practice takes, that it is not uh, every exhibition tries to be uh, a lesson from the exhibition before, and I think for me it's very, very characteristic from the distance, as a critic, I would say uh, the, the biennials are emblematic of what is happening in Greece. So if you want, in, in a even kitschig, uh, to a kitschig, to a kitsch point, so Agora, 
was really an emblematic uh, opening up a space for uh, discussion and uh, for social, for creating social relations, as it was with the movement of indignados. So as a Greek society uh, did, so this was one point, and now the biennial of the, the two years biennial that doesn't want to be a festival that comes and goes, but wants to be a sustainable laboratory, is I think actually reflecting one to one what Greece, Greek society is doing at the moment. Out of, uh, as Athena uh, said, the defeat, what can you win out of the defeat that actually this is what society, society organizes itself in a long term, even without money. Um, but my question to you would be, um, just to, uh, if you want to uh, provoke, what are your challenges in that? I mean, is there this, because I think there is at the moment in Greece not a possibility to do non-contradiction work. Like Destroy Athens was an exhibition that was before the riots in 2008, as if it knew the riot would come, but was fully financed by Deutsche Bank. Like really high going. No? What was Someone the No, it wasn't. The, uh, the sum that Deutsche Bank paid was exactly the money that the municipal uh, space wanted us to rent. It was nothing. As it came, then that's it went. All the money that we amassed from all other resources made it by him. Good. It was uh, back then. We always we all, all thought it is a Deutsche Bank event. Um, so you have my question to you is uh, my question to you is like we have about here an image of cultural autocracy. Mm -hmm. Yes, with uh, rich people funding us. And uh, you are uh, trying to do a laboratory. What is, is there any challenge? Uh, are you talking about the inherited antinomies in that? Yes. But of course, there is a, everything that has uh, this ambition of the scale. In a, in a way, it's, uh, it has the antinomy within it because nowadays we're thinking we're talking about something that requires a lot of energy. I'm not talking about uh, money or resources or whatever. Just to amass this, this kind of uh, energy, and maybe I'm, I'm misunderstood uh, before when I said about cockroaches. I had this talk uh, two days ago with, a, with an artist from, from LA, and he's, he's been telling me that it's extremely easy to make a, to shoot a, a movie in LA with no means because everyone is kind of technically advanced to, to produce a, a. So it's extremely easy to produce a no budget film or, or then a very expensive film. It's nothing in between. So we are, of course, in the lowest. So people, I mean, we have producers here that have made uh, some uh, movies. I believe uh, Hector Oldren also did something with, uh, with little resources. Uh, all the cultural producers, we are producing something because we come together. We give our energy. But even that, there's a hubris in that. In times of such, a, of such crisis, to, um, to, to declare and to ask and uh, to, to master all this uh, human uh, capacity is also something unknown because there are other priorities. But should we seize our work? I don't know. I'm, I'm finding it very difficult. In fact, as an artist, I already believe that I have given my, 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 my part in that. And I should uh, uh, contract into my own uh, studio practice because I feel even, even that uh, detours from, from my practice. And another thing. You, you said about uh, the, the evolution of the Biennale. This is basically our only uh, privilege. <coughs> Since we have no resources, in order to survive, we are able to, to amend and change and, and, uh, and evolve in order to survive. And this is something that doesn't happen. For example, we are here in a, in a massive uh, festival. It has to confine with some with some levels of uh, professionalism, of some levels of even the, pro the program that you are expected to find here. I mean, yesterday we were in production, in production that we didn't like, for example, and we understand why this is necessary for that. We understand why Biennial has the artist, the A-rate artist that it has, an international uh, Biennial. But for us, it's not the way. And another uh, important lesson, there just a few lessons, I, I believe I've shared most of them with you, that production changes the content and production is equals the, the, the problems that you, that you have. So 
within our problems, and that's what we are all doing, the cultural producers in Greece, we try to find the ways to survive, but also to make something meaningful. So out of the problems come a form. So uh, from means to form, that's something interesting. When we first started uh, the, the Biennale, we asked uh, some of our colleagues, fellow curators, fellow artists, like us, so we said, look, you know us, we've been working so many years together, come and work, let's do something. Of course, voluntarily, I, I, I've been doing that voluntarily. Come, can I do it with, with us? And they said, no, I'm a curator. I'm not going to, to uh, mess my, my hands with something dirty as production. But no, in fact, for us, for all of us, production is our work. Would you say that there's uh, also a, like an aesthetic of crisis uh, that results out of this means of production? The aesthetic of crisis is something different. Aesthetic of crisis comes from, from the vantage point that you are. If you are inside the crisis, in order to make something relevant, you have something to, to make something that relates to the crisis. So you are part of that. If you come uh, as a paratrooper, falling uh, with your parachute in Athens, trying to, to do something. I had an interview the other day. I mean, as I said, uh, every week we have interviews from major uh, German newspapers and, uh, and uh, TV channels. They come and they have already an agenda of what they want to solve. They want to take some, some shooting of uh, homeless people, uh, people waiting uh, in the queues. But I'm here to tell you, no people complained in the queues. I've been in the queues with the ATM. I had a problem, my Skype account, my this account, my other account, we, we don't have, even now, we cannot use our credit cards here, that we are. If, if something happens, we can't uh, pay with that. But I can tell you, nobody argued in the ATMs. So this false, distorted thing is totally uh, uh, doctored, as uh, Farfari said before, the, in the morning uh, session.